Good evening and welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church midweek worship service at 501 West Thomas Boulevard in Port Arthur, Texas, where Red, Reverend Randy Vaughn is our pastor. This evening's hosts are Sister Geraldine Robinson and myself, Francis Davis. We are studying the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 8 to 15. Wherever you are listening to our broadcast, we pray that you will follow with us in studying our lessons, making disciples. Sister Robinson will give you a brief overview of last week's study. You know, uh, Francis, I might say here that uh, the uh, book of Acts is called the book of the apostles, but you may also say that it is the acts of the Holy Spirit. As the early church emerged and had lots of energy and power, it was certainly the work of the Holy Spirit that was displayed uh, with the apostles and the believers that caused the, the gospel to spread throughout the book of Acts and also throughout the uh, entire New Testament. So uh, the Holy Spirit has empowered all of the, the apostles and the believers was certainly instrumental in getting the early church started. Uh, previously in Acts 6 through 7, just as a matter of a little background here, as I just said that the, the church grew with new converts that had many different nationalities and uh, from many nations. And the Greek people uh, felt that their widows were being neglected with the daily distribution of food. So they brought this complaint to the apostles. Now the apostles had their hands full serving. Uh, well, they were preaching and they were teaching and they were praying. So this would have been an extra burden on them to have to also distribute the food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the Greek people felt that their widows were being neglected. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know why. Perhaps there was a language barrier mm -hmm. or perhaps there was a culture barrier, but at any rate they, uh, they, they wanted this corrected. And so a meeting was called <coughs> to address this problem. And you know when I was thinking about this when you, when there's conflict or confusion in the church, mm -hmm. it needs to be addressed as soon as possible Amen. because you don't Amen. like things for, like that to fester. Mm -hmm. And so a meeting was called and the uh, group decided on seven men mm -hmm. that should minister this uh, uh, distribution of the food so no one would be left yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Our scripture today focuses on Stephen, who was one of the men chosen to help with the distribution of the food. Now, later these men are called deacons, <clears throat> but they weren't just randomly chosen, Francis. No, they weren't. They uh, had to meet certain criteria. Yes. Yes. And the criteria that they had to meet, uh, they had to be well respected in the community. Uh -huh. They had to be full of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm and they had to be men of wisdom. Amen. You know, in thinking about uh, church leaders in our modern church today, I would think that those criteria would certainly meet, have to be met by leaders. Because if you have leaders uh, who don't have the, you know, not filled with the, right, those qualifications are who's not filled with the Holy Spirit, certainly you're going to run into conflict and confusion. Yes. Yes. But Stephen apparently met these qualifications mm -hmm. as he was the first one named in verse 5. Uh, uh, he was chosen by the people and his name appears first mm -hmm. on the list. So this says a lot about Stephen's character mm -hmm. and what the people thought of him as a leader. Mm -hmm. And this brings us now, uh, Francis, to the, our study today in Acts 6, 8 through 15. And as we go in today's lesson, 
Stephen was one of the great men of the early church, as Sister Robinson has already stated. But he was also a strong witness of the gospel. The scripture says that Stephen was a man full of grace, full of God's grace yes. and power. He performed great wonders and signs. His strong faith was reinforced by the Holy Spirit. You know you have to have the Holy Spirit. When you're trying to make disciples, you have to have the Spirit of God with you. You have to be careful how you are trying to reach somebody. But you got to have the faith that Stephen had. But he was diligent in what he did for God. He was faithful. We also have to be faithful when we are doing the work for Christ. It was proved the truth of the gospel miracles in Christ's name. He did them. They were proven because he did them in the name of Jesus. Yes. But because of the, the spirit that he had, today I think that's a, we still have to have the spirit of God within us, Sister Geraldine, that we be able to reach those that are lost. Yes. We, we don't know day after day who's going to come to us, who we going to meet, but we got to be prepared to be able to do the work of the ministry. And you know, as we uh, uh, go and make disciples, and as we, uh, we uh, mature as disciples ourselves, uh, just like Stephen, he was bold in his, in his talk, yes. and he used his spiritual gifts yes. to enhance the church. Yes. So he didn't just, uh, he, he was a leader. And he was filled up with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. And it showed because he, he stood and, and, and did these miracles and uh, uh, made so, this, the signs. Stephen was not afraid. He was not afraid. No. But uh, it's important also that you got to stand. Oh, you yes. got to stand on that that you know. That is and correct. Stephen knew his stand. He knew that he had the power of God. And he stood. And I think that's very important today, uh, you who are listening, that you have to stand for what is right. That is correct. Mm -hmm. But you know we're going to get opposition. We, yes. As we move yes. into that next verse. Yes. Yes. The opposition arose with members of the synagogue. And in the synagogue, there was many synagogues. And in these synagogues, they were made up of Romans and Jews. And they were from different areas, the Cyrenians, the Alexanderans, yes. from Asia, from Sicilia. They were from all areas. But when it rose up with opposition, what I like about Stephen, Stephen still had the wisdom of God. Yes. And so they could not come against him. So they had to plot a way to get Stephen, wants to change his mind. But you, if you know God and you know God for yourself, you don't let anybody change you for what you know about God. Because if he's done anything for you, you know what he's done and you are able to tell somebody I'm your testimony stand. about what he That's had right. to do. And you have to stand on that. Yeah, they, they started this debate yes. with, with, yes. with Stephen. And apparently Stephen won uh, because he showed such power and such wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, in their challenging him. So, uh, you know, a lot of times we can imagine how these, these people felt because uh, as they debated Stephen, and Stephen apparently won the debate, mm -hmm. they had to figure out another way oh, yeah. uh, to, to get at him. They had to figure out how to discredit him. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we see the, uh, that kind of thing in our... Uh, in our world today, today yes. especially in the political world, yeah, you know, when the, a candidate can't win an election, you know, under his own merit, mm -hmm. he devises methods yes. of uh, to discredit his opponent, and that's what they tried to do in Stephen with Stephen in verse eleven. <clears throat> but you know, Sister in, in the political realm, when when they're uh, out there campaigning for themselves where you can't find anything, he's standing up with his credibility, credibility, but then you can't find anything, they go to digging, and, and you know that 
oh, they go yeah. way back. Oh yeah. They they may go back some five, ten years back and bring up something that that the political person probably done forgot about themselves. But then yet they bring all of they this up and try up. to discredit him. That's right. And so this is what was happening in here. They was trying to discredit Stephen right. for That's the things that he knew. But Stephen stood. Yes, yes. Mercy let them there. They set out the plot, but when they set out the plot, they set it out secretly. They got people secretly to come in and try to change change the way Stephen was thinking. As they were saying, he spoke blasphemer. They started making all kind of accusations, saying the things that he said. And he talked about against Moses, and he mm -hmm. talked against Moses. He talked against God. Right. But that was nothing that he was doing, but they were calling that he was just blaspheming against them. Well, they just brought in men to, to actually tell lies. Yes. You know, yes. and uh, they talked how uh, Stephen blasphemed Moses and God. And if you remember, <clears throat> at Jesus' trial, Accusations, yes. false accusations false were made yes. against him also. So uh, uh, this also happened to Stephen. And we, you know, why do we have to be, do false stuff? Why do we have to create lies to well, change? That was going to be the only way that they could get their point over because they they couldn't beat him in with the in the debate. Couldn't beat them in the no. face, so they had to lie. They had to lie. Okay, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, w when they talked about uh, him blaspheming uh, Moses and God, then this aroused the crowd. This aroused the elders. Mm -hmm. This aroused the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that verse 12, Stephen was arrested. He was arrested. And he was brought before the high council. Now we know what that high council was. Yeah, right? it was the Sanhedrin. That was the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin council. That's right. That was the same one that, that tried Jesus. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. And some of the translations that I read said uh, they didn't just arrest Stephen. They drug, drug him. him. <clears throat> yes. They yes. drug him to the, to the Sanhedrin council because they had to address him blaspheming, uh, in their estimation, blaspheming uh, Moses and God, God because mm -hmm. Moses was the what? The, the great right. lawgiver. Yes. And they honored him. And what he said was sacred. And so, and God honored uh, Moses. Mm -hmm. So if God, uh, if that, Mo if, they, if Stephen was blaspheming uh, Moses, uh -huh. he was also blaspheming God. Yes. And yes. so, uh, they had to uh, really discredit Stephen in any way that they could. In any way that they yes, could. They yes. was going to try to get. But even in the, uh, them dragging him, yes. uh, they did it secretly. As I said before, they did it secretly. But then they did it secretly where he wouldn't have no witnesses for himself. He was going to be by himself with, with these other people. But so, you. Same thing happened with Jesus. They yeah. tried Jesus at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, when no one is followers. Right, trials were not held at, at night, but they wanted to hurry up and get that done. So we can see how the minds of wicked people, people work. work. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The, the opponents of Stephen could not win a fair fight. No. So they would use the lies, and we had already said yes. the popular opinion. The same crowd praised Jesus. The crowd, but this crowd, they loved, they loved the apostles, but they cried against Stephen. So they stirred, stirred up, and we talked about earlier about how they mm -hmm. stirred, stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. Isn't it ironic when you know people know who God is and who's speaking, and they turn uh, different ways? Yes. They just just change, just turn because it sounds good what those other people are saying. Say, yeah. So I'm gonna just put down what God has said, and I'm gonna turn to what because the popular people are saying this, the popular people are saying that when they know that it's not right. Mm -hmm. You know the truth of God, but you let others persu persuade, persuade you, you yes. to go a different direction. Don't let anybody persuade you to do 
do anything that you know is wrong. If you know it's wrong, if you have to stand by yourself, you stand by yourself because it is the truth of God that's going to set you free. That is right. Now, these witnesses continue to lie uh, in verses 13 and 14 as they accuse Stephen of speaking against the temple and against the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we have heard them say, is what they were saying, we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Now notice they said of Nazareth. Uh -huh. We know where they were going, going with, with that. that. Yes. You know, yes. What good can any good come, come out, out of Nazareth? Out of yes. Nazareth? Yes. They said that uh, he was uh, trying to take the, to uh, destroy the customs that Moses had uh, had brought Probably. down. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that was something that was certainly. Uh, not acceptable to them <clears throat> because they kept saying well this Jesus of Nazareth yeah. it was going to destroy the place and it yeah. was going to change the custom of Moses yeah. that Moses had handed down yeah. to us but then we could see the falseness going already and they said that this Jesus was going to destroy the temple yes you know and uh but Jesus they didn't even finish saying what Jesus said, said yeah. because they just said part of it. Yeah. Uh, because Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, I'll I'll raise it up again, again in, th in three days. They just used the first part of that because, in their minds, to destroy the temple would be uh, certainly something uh, that was unconscionable. But Jesus wasn't talking he about wasn't, a building. No, he wasn't talking about the building. Jesus he was, was talking, talking about, about his body. Himself. Yeah, he was talking, talking about, about himself. Of body. course, they, they didn't, they didn't uh, get, you know, that get any spiritual meaning out of that. All they could think about is Jesus is, he was talking about destro destroying yeah. our sacred temple. Yes. And that definitely was a no-no. <clears throat> in, in verse... Uh, Uh, Stephen, mm -hmm. and he endorsed 
trust him 100%. But Ms. Jardine, we can have that same type of face. You can know the truth. You don't have to have any sadness on your face. You can be bold witnesses for God. And if we're going to be disciples makers, we're going to have to have the face of God. We're going to have to have that faith uh, that that as if we are on the witness stand knowing that we are not guilty, that we got that boldness on our face and we can tell somebody just how good God is. Oh yeah. But because you know the truth, then no blasphemy will come against anyone. But God will put a smile on your face and he'll put that smile on your face that nobody understands but you and God. Oh, yeah. But because of the smile on your face, huh, we can make some disciples now. We can just glorify God because we are standing in Him. The yes. Word of God says, stand. 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 Stand on a firm foundation. If do, all you can do is stand. Stand firm on that that you know. That you know. Stand firm on that. Don't let anyone deter you from what you know about God. Yes, we can take a lesson from Stephen. Yes, we and can. And his boldness. And he is being so courageous. <clears throat> it, I feel that he, he just, you know, no matter what it cost him, he was going to continue to be an orator and to, he was going to continue to preach the gospel. And we're going to see as the, the uh, next uh, study in chapter 7 how, how uh, Stephen stood up mm -hmm. to this Sanhedrin council and gave the... the history of the Israelite people yes. uh, that they had they, they had nothing to say. Nothing. They couldn't well, say nothing anything they could say. because he told them about themselves. Yes. Uh, yes. From from the time they were in Egypt until the present time. Uh, until, which, oh. His face reflected that that, yes. per, that perfect his, his face reflected that and confidence. You gotta have some confidence in what you know about God. One that that you know and trust. He trusted his God. Yes, he did. But when you have the wisdom and the holiness, it makes it makes your faith shine. And you know, as disciple makers, <clears throat> a lot of times we are shy in approaching people. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, rejection we we just we don't like to feel rejected. You know, no, we, we want to be accepted, accepted <clears throat> wherever yeah. we go. But we have the mandate of making disciples, yes, we and we don't have to go and insult people when we talk to them no, about coming to Christ. No. You tell them that Jesus loves them, and 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 tell them, uh, you know, how they must repent of their sins and how Jesus has died for them. And uh, you do that in a way that they can think about it. Yes, <clears throat> yes. And uh, uh, if you approach, try to approach it the right way. Now, some people are just going to, you know, reject <laughs> you. Because anyway. They, any, oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So those people, you have to just continue to pray for them and move on. But uh, we have to remember as disciple makers that we have the... the uh, but we have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, Spirit right. in us <clears throat> as we go forward. And, you know, a lot of times uh, I used to do door-to-door uh, -door witnessing. We knock on some doors. Uh, some people would just be so rough. What y'all want? <laughs> you know, y'all from that church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you know, and uh, but you have to... Again, stand. Uh, that's right. You, you have stand. to stand and, that and, faith got the and tell the truth. Yes. And yes. To, so this study of Stephen to, <clears throat> with me has really uh, personally has been encouraging to me to, to, to be bold, to be bolder. Yes, yes. And then I, I am all that uh, than I have been because the Holy Spirit, we can see how the Holy Spirit worked in the early church. And that the Holy Spirit is still working today. He's still, he's, he's alive and doing well. Doing so we good. just have to uh, use him. Yeah. We just have to use yeah. him. I didn't mean that's, to go on like that. That, that. That's all right. But in, this, in my study of this lesson, um, one thing that I have to be reminded of in making disciples as well in, in my personal
personal life is to make sure my faith, yeah. the, um, that my glow will stay you, upon me, you know, yeah. somebody can say, well, I said, well, I didn't say anything. Some people will say, well, you didn't have to say anything. But your faith showed it all. Yeah. And so I have been really mindful of that here recently because people would say that to me. But because of his faith and because of God's glory. But uh, back to the first part of the lesson in, in verse 8, we just got to make sure that we have that faith. Yeah. We got to be bold in our faith. Be bold. You know? And if we are bold in our faith, and we're going to make disciples, we're going to have to stand for what we know that is right. I don't care what another group is saying. When you know that group is not right, then you don't stand with that group. If you got to stand by yourself, all you do is just stand. Just, just stand. Well, we will conclude this lesson, and uh, hopefully that you have gotten some out of this study this evening, and I hope wherever you are listening to us, that something that we have said that has made you mindful of something that you can do as you are making disciples. No, God is a true God. He is He is live and well. Know that you have to be faithful. Know that you have to be willing. You have you have the power of God because He has given us to it. So use the power that God has given you. And if you use the power that God has given you, you don't have anything else to do but to stand. So majority. I think this has been a beautiful lesson this, this afternoon. But church family and those all around us, be yeah. blessed with the word of God. Yeah. Because the word of God is what we are standing on today. Yeah. Today in this crisis that we have, God has made us be able to do without some things that we thought we needed. But God let us know that we can be still and do his work and his will. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now. We praise and we glorify you, God. We magnify your name today, God. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this study. We just praise your holy name, God. And we thank you, God, for those who are listening, God, has gotten a word today, God, that will help them, God, in their own personal life, God. So I pray that you continue to bless us, God, as we go forth and make disciples, God. You are a true and a living God, and we're going to trust you. We're going to believe you. And we're seeking for more power, wisdom, and knowledge from you, God. It's all in the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and praise God. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church Online Ministry. Reverend Randy Givon is pastor. We are located at 501 West Thomas Boulevard in Port Arthur, Texas. Today is Sunday, May the 10th, 2020, and these are our announcements. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Wednesday night Bible study is available on Wednesdays. Study lessons are offered weekly. Please go to our website at www.mountsinaimbc.com or join us on Facebook. The church doors are open. However, during this pandemic, we will still be practicing social distancing and other practices to ensure the health and safety of our members. If you do not feel comfortable being in our midst, please continue to join us online as this part of our ministry will continue. If you are not feeling well, please join us on another day. The sanctuary is open on Wednesdays for prayer from 9 a.m. To 4 p.m. Feel free to join this church body if you want to know more about Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, if you're looking for a church home, if you want to renew your relationship with Christ, if you want to acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, contact the church at 409-982-6464 extension 101. Online giving can be done through our website at www.mountsinaimbc.com slash give. We thank you for your support of this ministry. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continually rest upon you. Have a blessed day all day.